Jasmine Dean, where you at? Family's asking and that's a fact. Jasmine Dean, bring her back. What do you have to say for yourself? What's for dinner? What's going on here? What's that stink? What's this for? What time is it? What's that? Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel, Watson's World. Guys, I will be continuing with my true crime chronicles on this channel, right? As a matter of fact, today we're going to be unearthing a very moving story that's as worrying as it is mysterious. Guys, this story is one that has been in the media for a while. A lot of emphasis has been placed on this story in recent times. As a matter of fact, Cliff Hughes did a documentary on this story, guys. It happened three years ago, all the way from Bull Bay, St. Thomas. Well, Bull Bay is on the border of St. Thomas and St. Andrew. This is the baffling disappearance of Jasmine Dean. Now, guys, I know you're going to say, oh, we've, we've heard this story many times, but I'll be offering my own little input. As a matter of fact, I will be profiling the perpetrator, the person who I believe abducted Jasmine Dean. Now, Jasmine Dean, a young woman who, whose life seemed to be on an upward trajectory until one fateful night. It's a sad situation. We'll be diving into it, guys. So grab your go-to comfort beverage, find your coziest seat, and let's dig in. Now, to set the scene, let's take you to Bull Bay St. Thomas, located on the southeastern end of Jamaica. A quiet place, a popular beach destination known for its crystal clear waters, white sandy beaches, and vibrant coral reefs. The Dean family was living a humble life in this beautiful place. Jasmine, or Maya, as her family affectionately called her, was their beacon of hope. Now, can you imagine the first child in the family to go to university? And not just any university, but the prestigious University of the West Indies there in Jamaica, Mona Campus, right? She was a real life inspiration. Jasmine however, began experiencing difficulties with her sight when she was just two years old. She was later diagnosed with um, glaucoma. But did she let that stop her? No, she did not. She was a fighter, a survivor, and most importantly, an achiever. Lloyd Dean, Jasmine's father, is the, the sole breadwinner of the family, a man who, despite the hardships, never abandoned his children after their mother died uh, 15 years ago. Now, can we just pause for a second and give a shout out to Lloyd, big up yourself, Lloyd Dean. He's the epitome of parental devotion. Now, Lloyd recounted that on the night Jasmine disappeared, she stayed at school late to study. She relied on the university's internet to complete her coursework, a small but essential luxury they couldn't afford at home. She was just doing her best, you know? Now, February 27, 2020, I think that's a date etched into the minds of Jasmine's family forever. Jasmine was at the back gate of her university, UWI, waiting for a bus to take her on that over one hour commute back home. She was wearing a white blouse and blue jeans. But guess what? She never made it home. What happened to Jasmine Dean? No one knows. Now let's talk about gut feelings. We have, we have all had those, right? Jasmine's sister, Naveen, had one of those that night. She was anxious and restless, especially when 
at certain time of the night, she did not see Jasmine come home. She went to her dad and she was like, Dad, you need to call Jasmine, you know. Of course, Lloyd tried calling Jasmine, but then he realized that he did not have enough minutes on his phone. So they contacted um, Wang, who is, who is Naveen's um, brother, and Wang called Jasmine. When they finally contacted Jasmine, Jasmine told them that she was in a taxi. Now, there is something worrying about this call that I noted, guys. Wang mentioned that a rooster was heard crowing in the background at that hour of the night. Isn't that the sort of details that makes the, the, the hairs on the back of your head, you know, stand up? Like, come on. Now, just a little known fact here, guys. If your rooster is bellowing in the middle of the night, chances are it's not without reason. A rooster is programmed for vigilance um, to perform his role as flock protector. If your rooster is kept awake at night by noise, light or predators lurking, he will crow when he sees fit. No, listen to this. Jasmine, on again, off again, boyfriend, Theo. He was a military man, a soldier, based on my understanding. He had been in touch with Jasmine earlier that day. Jasmine had asked him to buy medication for her headache. Apparently, Jasmine was having a headache, and so she asked Theo to buy her some, um, some pill for um, her headache, right? And so Theo showed up at her family's home that same night with the medication, thinking she was home. But of course, when Theo got there, he was told that Jasmine was not there. So he tried to call Jasmine on her phone several times. No, guess what? Her phone went straight to voicemail. As the hours ticked by, panic set in. They even fill up Theo's car with gas, you know, to score Kingston in a, in a frantic search, searching for Jasmine. But they did not find her. Now you may be asking, all right, by this time they need to report it to the police. Well, they tried to report it to the police and they said that, well, we can't create a file or we can't take this report until 24 hours had passed. A long excruciating wait for a family already stretched to their emotional limits, I believe. Now the family had a sleepless night, as you can imagine. Their minds racing and hearts pounding. The next morning, Lloyd Dean does what any desperate father would do. He reports his daughter missing to the Mona police station there in Kingston. Now, of course, university students who heard about this are now out on the streets, right? Flyers in hand, hearts in mouth, looking for one of their own. A fellow student says the dread and sorrow weigh heavy on everyone. Now imagine the torment her family is going through. It's, it's palpable. Now, this is where things start to take an even darker turn. Norman Haywood, the director of security at UWI Mona campus, provided CCTV footage from that fateful evening. Jasmine stood at the bus stop for, for, for more than an hour, over an hour people. And nobody except one vendor named Carlton Williams seemed to give a second thought. Carlton noticed Jasmine's flight and of course he took the initiative to get her a taxi. According to him, the driver agreed to take Jasmine to Papine, saying it would be his last trip for the day. Now, Carlton later identified the taxi to the police, and here's the, the, the kicker, guys. He didn't even know she was blind. Now, my question is, would things have played out differently if he knew 
that Jasmine was blind? We can only speculate, right? Now, Lloyd, her father, has an ache in his voice that could break glass. Why? He asked, would these men not take her back to the campus if it was the taxi driver's last trip? Why leave her alone in the square in the middle of the night? That's what they're asking. That's what the, uh, Jasmine's father is asking. He's saying that this is a disabled girl. Why would you put her on a taxi and have the taxi leave her in the middle of a square? No questions upon questions and every answer seems to, to birth new queries. Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay steps in and says that the driver is cleared. That is the taxi driver is cleared. DNA, evidence and science say he's not involved. But wait, there's more. Theo, you remember Theo, Jasmine's complicated love interest, is also questioned. 17 unanswered calls to Jasmine on that night, but again, no evidence. Noveen, Jasmine's sister, finds it odd that he was taken into custody, right? And what Noveen is saying, obviously, the police may have found something that made him a suspect, right? But I believe that because Theo is the on again, off again boyfriend, of course he would be a suspect, right? Now, just when you think it can't get more complicated, Noveen drops another bombshell. Jasmine. <laughs> Jasmine was involved with a local pastor. Yes. You heard that right. A pastor who has been in some hot water himself. Text messages reveal he broke it off with Jasmine due to his own scandalous involvement, right? No, Jasmine family says that Jasmine was a private person, a young woman striving for independence. So she didn't tell them much. No, they discovered messages on her social media and phone that they can't quite piece together. Cryptic and confusing. That's how they were described, leaving them with yet more questions and no answers. So here we are at the crossroads of facts, speculations, and heart-wrenching des um, despair. What happened to Jasmine Dean? Asher Dean, Jasmine's older sister, also found some puzzling text messages in Jasmine's phone. One message was a contact with the number 7879. No idea what that means. Another was a message filled with emojis from someone named Enoch. She tried calling this mysterious Enoch and guess what? The number is disconnected. Is it just me or is that not super sketchy? <laughs> but, but wait, there's another number um, named Kevin. Ashia texted him and he responds with condolences, claiming he hadn't heard from Jasmine recently. I mean, who is this Kevin? And why did he know about Jasmine's disappearance before being told? Or it could be that you know, Ashia told him that Jasmine could not be found during their conversation. During my research, I didn't find anything which suggests that she told him, but that was kind of suspicious in my mind. Now, Noveen, Jasmine's other sister, throws in another puzzle piece. She says Jasmine broke up with Theo because his baby's mother was getting jealous. But Theo, I think they, well, Theo did not come around for a while, but then Theo suddenly started coming around again. Picking up Jasmine from home. Uh, what was Theo's role in her life post breakup? Because they had broken up, right? Was he an ex who can't let go or just a concerned friend? 
Now let's shift gears to the police. Stephanie Lindsay, the head of the Constabulary's communication, um, corporate communications unit, revealed something critical. She said that on the night Jasmine disappeared, three cell phone towers picked up her location, leading towards Bull Bay. And guess what? She was supposed to be on a JUTC bus that plies that route, but she never made it. Now, this case has even stumped the police. Despite 50 searches across Jamaica, there is not a single trace of her. It's like Jasmine vanished into thin air. But here comes another curveball. In June 2020, two men were charged with possession of Jasmine's phone and ATM card. However, the police said that they couldn't link them directly to Jasmine's disappearance. So what does that mean for the case? Well, now here's the heartbreaker. Because Jasmine had not been found within a year, right? The police had no option but to categorize her disappearance as a homicide. But Jasmine's family, her dad, her sister Naveen, uh, they, they're still holding on to hope. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if they believe that she's still alive, but I remember at one point he was saying, boy, I think she's still alive. I'm just not feel that she's dead, you know, and, and I think that's, that's a father's hope, right? But they want answers. They want Jasmine. I think that even if she's dead, they would like to claim the body so that they can give her a proper burial. Here's what's maddening though, people. Jasmine was visually impaired, yet there was no transportation system in place for students with special needs at the university. I believe her family and the University of the West Indies left a 22-year-old visually impaired woman to fend for herself after dark in a place where danger is all too real. What does that say about our system there in Jamaica? Now guys, as an ex-police officer, I want to attempt to profile Jasmine Abductor. It's important to note that profiling is a tool among many and not a silver bullet to solve cases. It is also based on the data available. So let me see if I can give you, you know, a profile of who I believe this person is, right? So a little background here, guys. Jasmine Dean was 22 year old, as we pointed out earlier, right? She was a university student who was visually impaired. She was determined, smart, and striving for independence. I think we are looking at someone who likely knew about her vulnerability and might be a part of her social circle or someone who had been observing her for a while. Now, of course, she was last seen at a bus stop and her, and her cell phone data places her moving towards Bull Bay. So the abductor might be familiar with this area or he could be someone who has a reason to be there, like he lives there, or he has family there. I think this was a high-risk abduction carried out in a public place and involves manipulation of others to facilitate the crime. I, I think this would suggest a level of audacity or boldness or some planning or, or even experience in carrying out abductions, right? This could also indicate the perpetrator is older rather than younger and possibly quite charismatic to convince others unknowingly to aid him. As senior superintendent uh, Stephanie Lindsay pointed out, the taxi driver was cleared. This would lead us to believe that whosoever is involved, knows how to leave minimal trace evidence 
or has enough knowledge to clean up after themselves. This could hint at someone with a background or interest in law enforcement, the military, or forensics, or at the very least, did his research right um, around you know covering up his, his footprints. Now, Jasmine's phone and ATM card were found in the position of two men who couldn't be directly linked to her disappearance. I think this could suggest that more than one individual could uh, have been involved in Jasmine's abduction. However, it also suggests that her abductor right, disposed of or passed on her belongings which indicates to me that this individual had no interest in monetary gain. That's how I feel about the case. Now, based on the available data, we might be looking at an older male, possibly someone who knows Jasmine or has been observing her. He likely has knowledge or interest in forensic science or policing or or you know something to the so if um, to the effect um, this person is audacious and manipulative. The suspect is likely someone familiar with the area where Jasmine was last traced to, um, which is Bulbia, which is also where she resides. Right, which means that this person may also reside in Bulbia. Yeah. Now, while we cannot point fingers without concrete evidence. I think this profile may help us understand the type of individual we might be dealing with here, guys. So, my beautiful people, we still have so many questions and so few answers. This case continues to haunt all of us, not just Jasmine's family. Why would anyone target a young woman trying to get an education, striving to make something of herself. Where is the humanity, guys? This is where I wrap up, guys. Thank you for taking the time out, right, to watch this video. Now, if you have any information that could shed light on Jasmine's disappearance, please, I beg you, people, let us make a difference. Reach out to me. Reach out to me um, at the novocop at gmail.com. I will relate the information to the police because I know many of you may not trust the police, but I will relate this information to the police and your identity will be kept strictly confidential. As an ex-police officer, my duty was always to protect my source and you have my word. My word is my bond. I will protect you. Remember, the smallest piece of information could be to, um, the key to solving this enigma. To bring a daughter back to her family and serve in justice. People, before you go, um, just to let you know, um, you can listen to the rap song um, after I wrap up here. Now guys, let's keep an eye out for each other in a world that can sometimes be so dark. Be someone's light. You never know whose life you might be saving. Before you go, click on the subscription button. Click on the notification bell so that you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. People, until next time, walk good. Yeah, man. Big up. Yo. Yeah. Listen up. Uh-huh. Yo. This is about Jasmine Dean, a student at Dreamo. Where has she been? One night in February, she's off the scene. We're looking for answers. What does it mean? Jasmine Dean, where you at? Family's asking and that's a fact. Jasmine Dean, bring her back. We won't stop until we know the act. Text calls clues, but they're all lean. Love, life, a mystery. What's it all mean?
We keep asking questions, filling the screen. We need some answers for Jasmine Dean. Jasmine Dean, where you at? Family's asking and that's a fact. Jasmine Dean, bring her back. We won't stop until we know the act. Time's ticking but hope ain't gone. Jasmine Dean will keep searching on. Let's raise our voices, make it known. We won't stop until Jasmine's home. Jasmine Dean, where you at? Family's asking and that's a fact. Jasmine Dean, bring her back. We won't stop until we know the act, yeah. Jasmine Dean, bring her back. We won't stop until we know the act. People, listen up. If you know where Jasmine Dean is, email me at thenovacop at gmail.com. We need to find Jasmine Dean for the family. If she's dead, we need to give her a proper burial. Come on. Let's make a difference in Jamaica, people. She has been missing for three years without a trace. Disappeared. Somebody has information. Your identity will be kept strictly confidential. Come on, people. Let's make a difference in our beautiful island. Let's find Jasmine Dean. Yeah. Jasmine Dean, where you at? Family's asking and that's a fact. Jasmine Dean, bring her back. We won't stop until we know the act. Yeah, peace out.